another fun episode with two of your favorite mouse moms, Lori, that's me, and Juliana. Hello. <laughs> Jen <laughs> is buried under some snow in upstate New York. Um, we are hoping that she will dig herself out at some point in time here. Um, but she is there, so you get wonderful two of us this week. And this week, we will be talking all about love, as it is Valentine's Day. But of course, we want to start with our cocktail. Um, so, Juliana, what do you have for us for our Mouska cocktail? All right. The Mouska cocktail today is a little Valentine's Day-inspired cocktail out of Disneyland. And there's a reason that we chose Disneyland, uh, which we'll find out when Lori gives us the newsreel in a little bit. But uh, there's a restaurant in Disneyland um, in downtown Disney called uh, Naples Restaurante e Bar. And the cocktail is called Spritz in Love, which is perfect, right? For Valentine's Day. Yes. So it's made with, uh, it's called Malfoy con Arancha Rosa, which is a uh, gin made with Sicilian blood orange. It's a Sicilian gin, I think, made with blood orange. And then uh, Lille Rosé, which is like a French uh, uh, aperitif wine. It's like a fortified wine. It's a rosé wine that has like some grapefruity flavor. It's not very sweet. And then Prosecco, which is Italy's sparkling wine, and strawberry puree. I think Which sounds, sounds, I was going to say, it sounds amazing. And sounds for great. people that don't understand everything you just said, <laughs> gin, rose wine, prosecco, and strawberry puree. This is yeah. what it boils down to in my head. It sounds great. Like I, I'm curious about what color it is because the 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 gin is like a deep orange, and then the rosé is like this pale pink. I'm very curious about it. And then the strawberry. I puree. was gonna say, I think I saw a picture of it. Um, because it, this was um one of the drinks from last year, but they've had it over the years, and it was, it wasn't red. It was a pinky. Mm -hmm. so Perfect. I think yeah so it was probably very Instagram worthy um but it. it was it was the perfect color so no this sounds delicious I don't know how you could recreate this at home because I I don't know what those other two things are um I don't know where to get that gin I mean I guess you could find it like on some I don't know at a specialty liquor store but well I rosé you can find any LA total wine or whatever but anyway okay. So okay. that's the mouse cocktail. I really yes. want to try it. Hopefully it's not too sweet. I might be like a little light on the strawberry puree because sometimes that could be like, I don't know. We'll see. But that's it. So why, Lori, did we pick this drink? So we picked this drink as big news came out of Disneyland um, this week. So during California Adventure's 20th anniversary that happened this week, they made an announcement that they are planning to have a new limited time ticketed uh, experience. It's going, to, they're planning on having it begin mid-March. It's going to focus on world famous food and beverages and last minute merchandise and crafted entertainment experiences. Um, so it's, it's not that Cal, I think it's going to be in California Adventure. I think that's what we kind of determined from this. We weren't given a whole lot of information. Um, it was kind of just, this is what we're doing to sell it. And, you know, I think it was a letter of we're celebrating the 20th anniversary. This is our plans. So basically, California has been super strict. Um, like we were saying before, or like we were to talked about before, it was like a all the other parks have opened at some point in time and this park has not disneyland in california has been shut down since march right. uh, like, i feel terrible for yes. californians and people on that side of the country that where that's their disney fix i feel most terrible for the cast members like i would say it's the cast members i mean for it's one thing to kind of be like oh, okay well they shut down for a few months let's try and figure this out it's been a year. So you got to figure you have cast members that have some moved on, obviously, because they need to find a job. Um, and some that are still waiting and some that haven't had a job. And, you know, I'm super glad they are doing this and it's going to be limited. It'll be ticketed. They're going to space everyone out. Um, so it should be good. 
they uh they did say it will uh, enable them to bring about a thousand cast members back to work, which is awesome. I love that. Yes. I mean, so, it's, it's not 22,000, but, but. <laughs> no. it's not, but it's a thousand, you know, I think California just has super strict rules and I don't think they're going to give up on the theme park rule. So Disneyland's kind of come up with a, okay, well, you're not going to let us do the theme park, but then this is what we're going to kind of come up with. And I think it's an awesome, awesome thing for them to do for the cast members, for everything, just to get it open a little bit. Right. And, you know, I'm super excited that at least you'll get to see some gates open. I know. And, and I think it's, it, well, so did I read it's going to take place on, what is it, Buena Vista Street? Or, but is that, where is, wait, that's, that's just downtown Disney, right? That's it. Buena Vista Street is in Disneyland, I believe. Or it's good. Yeah, I'm getting confused because they announced it for California Adventure's 20th anniversary. So the assumption that people made was that it was going to be in California Adventure. Right. So it's confusing. So we don't know everything about it. I'm sure more will come. Right. So from what I understand, they already reopened dining, outdoor yes. dining on Buena yes. Vista Street, which is Disneyland's Main Street, right? I believe so, yes. Um. So I guess in addition to that, they're going to do this sort of special ticketed event. But again, we have no details. They just wanted to let us know it was coming to make us super excited. Uh, and it's working. Yes. Definitely. So um, yeah, maybe, maybe a trip oh, to California is in order. Buena Vista Street is at California Adventure. Oh. Oh, there well, we you know what? That totally makes sense. Because well, that's makes sense. Like, I'm sorry, guys. We're not, yes, we're not, we need to get to Disneyland a little bit more so we can. We do. We, we really do. So yeah. no, it, it's in California Adventure. So that all makes sense now. Right. It's like Hollywood Boulevard. Yes. Yeah, so very okay. exciting news. Um, other exciting news that we have, again, this is all good news. Um, good Blizzard, news. Yay. Um, Blizzard Beach is opening March 7th. Uh, which is awesome. Um, two water parks at Walt Disney World are Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach. And Blizzard Beach is opening. So it is great. Um, they talked about some of the COVID um, policies that they were going to have, just like we went to Volcano Bay. They, you wear your masks when you're interacting with cast members, when you're getting food and beverage, um, if you're just walking around. But if you're walking to a water attraction, um, or going into the water, you do not have to wear your mask. So we all don't get waterboarded. So <laughs> it's... <laughs> it is a bit of a trick though, right? Like you have to, cause you yes. keep all your stuff in one place, you know, whether you have a locker or a bench or somewhere where you want to keep your stuff, a cabana. And so you got to sort of keep going back for your mask because you can't yes. take it to the ride. Cause where are you going to put it while you're on the ride? Cause you don't want to get waterboarded as Lori yes. so eloquently put it um that would not be very Disney like no well but, you know I <laughs> said I tried explaining it to my boys when I said we were going they're just like well how is this gonna work with the mask do we have to like you know my son's gotten his mask wet before and he's like do I have to if you breathe it in you breathe in the water like what what do you and I'm like no you don't, don't have to wear it while you're on the water but like you said it's tricky logistic wise because if you're on one end of the park and you just came out of the water and you're like, oh, I'd like a drink. Nope. Right. You got to go back. <laughs> you got to go and get back your mask. and yeah. go get your mask and then go get it. Same thing. If you have to use the restroom, mm -hmm. you need to go back and get that mask. So I guess finding- There's going to be a lot of people peeing in the water. <laughs> <laughs> there totally is. Oh, well, COVID's the least of your worries now. <laughs> So let me, we are not, we are not condoning that by the way. I, I have never, you know, I, <laughs> I have never been to Blizzard Beach. Um, it's on my list for sure. It's moving up my list as I check more and more things off my list. But, um, is it, is it like physically large? Is it a large area? Yeah, it's a large area. So I, I was there when I was like 14 or 15, but for, <laughs> from when I can remember, you have like the wave pool area, you have the lazy river, but everything's kind of spread out. And then you have like, I think to the right side of the park is where like the bigger rides are. 
um, and the bigger like water, like slides and that type of thing. So I think it's, re it's really going to be important kind of where you set up Strategically and where you set your yeah, stuff up. and where you're putting stuff. And I think some people too, like just use lockers. They're like, we're not going to put anything down on, on chairs. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to have to be going, you know, in and out of your locker. It's gotten mm -hmm. very complicated. Mm -hmm. It gets so, doable though. I think we, I think when we went to Volcano Bay at Universal in October, I don't know how doable. it compares size wise. It was doable. It wasn't really terribly inconvenient. And, you know, I'd rather do that than get, you know, a disease. So that's fine. So, but <laughs> have they said anything about capacity restrictions? I know they said there's going to have, they're going to have the usual like uh, safety measures in place, but park reservations or. So apparently no park reservations, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so we'll see if that changes, especially over spring break, um, as you know, they can kind of keep track of the numbers when it comes to, uh, who buys tickets to the water park, but for annual pass holders that have the water park included, like myself, you can't, you're not going to know when I come. So I could just hmm. go on the eighth and if there's no park reservation made, I don't know how they're going to control those numbers. So I don't know if they're just not expecting as many people and maybe at some point this will change, but as of right now, no park reservations. So I guess we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, I think really what they should do, and if the Bobs and whoever else are listening, they should hand out baggies like they did on Splash Mountain to put like masks in. And then you could carry around like, you know, like you could have the baggie with your mask in and then it doesn't get wet, but then you could still go around and still have it. Idea, you know, Bob's, little Bob's if you're listening. Little Blizzard Beach uh, logo on the baggie might be cute. Cute. Um, we'll have so to yes. write that up in a Dear yeah. Bob's. Dear Bob's. But yeah, it's it'll be oh. interesting. So I plan on going in March. So I guess I will report back. Um, but I'm excited the water parks are opening again. It's bringing more cast members back. Um, I am excited they're opening Blizzard Beach over Typhoon Lagoon. Uh, Blizzard Beach is my favorite. You so like that one better. I, so that's interesting. Like I, I always trust that that they know what they're doing at Disney. You know, maybe they don't, but I've not seen them make too many mistakes over the years, and they they collect data, so they must know that they're that it's going to be. I don't know. I how can they know? But we'll see. I was going to say we'll we'll see. I. I, they made some mistakes yesterday. Um, but, um, yeah, so I was quickly at Magic Kingdom yesterday and the Super Bowl happened and Gronkowski was supposed to show up and it was, I don't know who was in charge of that event, Bob's, but it was not great. Um, they had items were, or areas roped up in front of Plaza for hours on end. It would had to have been four and a half, five hours but they kept telling people he wasn't coming out. They kept him backstage. Why rope off the so area? I have a feeling. <laughs> Don't rope off the area. As a as a uh, as a, a a long Patriots fan, familiar with this personality, I am guessing that it has less to do with Disney's mistakes and more to do with Gronkowski's. <laughs> erraticism <laughs> he's just a hard wave to pin down <laughs> so I think it uh, that's going to be my guess but that's me you know having that way and that much could be true me. that could they they kept him backstage right where that entrance is that you would go for parties so they did keep him back there he leaned over at one point in time waved you could see confetti going you've said the commercials have now come out um, and you've seen the promo uh, shots they've shot with Mickey and Minnie on the float. Um, it's interesting too, they used the float that, they used one of the floats that they've used for Mickey Mouse. So there was no Mickey Mouse cavalcade yesterday for about six hours. So they, they did do a parade? Float. Like it wasn't like a Super Bowl parade, but they did do what, like a cavalcade they, with They him? used the float in the back area with Mickey and Minnie and Gronk was there and it was in the back area. So we could see the top, like we could see what was going on, but they blocked off that entire area. So you couldn't get anywhere close, but all they did was create more mayhem in the hub right in front of the castle. But they were just and it, you can probably. repeat as many times as you want 
through the Magic Kingdom that a Super Bowl parade isn't going to ha- happen. But if you have an entire section roped off, people are not dumb. Right. They're not going to be like, oh yeah, nothing's happening. We'll just right. leave. Right. Like, and then a crowd shows point, up. And people that have no clue are like, oh, there's a crowd. I should wait here too. Something's happening. Even if they have no idea, right? There's a line. Let me go scan it. It was exactly what happened yesterday. They're like, oh, what's happening? I'm like, oh, well, Gronkowski might be coming out. And they're like, who is he? I'm like, oh, dear God, please stop walking. Just walk. So before, can we talk about the other experience you had? I mean, I know this has nothing to do with Valentine's Day, though I think he might be the love of your life. He might be. Talk about, before we get back into Valentine's Day, I'm really sorry, but we need to discuss uh, what happened yesterday also at Magic Kingdom. Yes. There was a sighting of a very popular, handsome, sexy yes. man. And if you don't know this name, I literally have nothing for you. Right. Um, you, you can just close X out. I got I got nothing for you. So... Yesterday, at Magic Kingdom, yesterday was Monday. We're recording on Tuesday. This will go live on Wednesday. So there was rumors that Gronkowski was coming because the Bucks has just won. And then I saw a picture pop up on one of the Facebook groups that Michael Jordan was at Magic Kingdom. She said and, Michael Jordan. And if you tell me Michael B. Jordan, again, please sign off because there's one. <laughs> there's only one Michael Jordan. There's one. Well, Lori's from Chicago, by the way. <laughs> Not that it I matters. am from Chicago. Um, the three most important things to me when I was 10 years old was probably Disney soccer and Michael Jordan and the Bulls, because that was the 90s. It was, you can't, like, I, I can't explain to you how obsessed I was with the Bulls and the Michael Jordan. He's an um, icon. He really is. I, you know, I've gone to games, I've gone to his restaurants when they were there. I have found his house in oh Highland God, you're Park. you're a stalker. <laughs> he has huge gates and they say 23 on, anyways. Um, so back to the story, saw a picture that he was at Magic Kingdom. I packed my two-year-old and myself up in seven minutes. Seriously, she was in that park in record time, you guys. Like, she told us that he was there, and the next thing we know, she's snapping pictures, and he's staring at her, like, (laughs) staring at her right in the face when she's taking pictures while he's, like, boarding a ride with, I guess, a grandkid, kid? No, it's his daughter. It's his daughter. Sorry, Michael. Everybody... Uh, yeah, everybody well, he's that thinks he's not, not a young guy anymore. He's not a young guy. This is a second marriage. He had two twin girls. They are now five or six now, but apparently this is their birthday. So he goes every February and brings his girls. So he that. lives in Florida, not a big journey. Um, but long story short, I was looking everywhere for him. I thought you were going to get popped bring, in the face. Yeah, I had to bring my two-year-old with me and because he's with me all day and I was angry because he threw a gigantic tantrum and he had to go on Peter Pan and the line was huge it was busy yesterday at Magic Kingdom because well, Brock was there and it was just I was so I was a grumpy mom I was a grumpy mom angry at their two-year-old for making me go on this ride but and lo and behold we get up there and six people in front of us as after I'm yelling at my two-year-old because he's climbing between my legs and hitting me, I look up and I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And so was he Michael waiting Jordan, in the regular line with you? No. So he has two VIP tour guides with him. And then he has two undercover securities. Okay. So the VIP walks him on because we to were, keep, I was literally to keep, there. To keep crazy people like you away, by the Correct. way. Correct. Um, I did, I did make eye contact with the security guard a couple more times. Um, so I don't, I think I was on the list after that. Oh my gosh, they had their eye on you. If you haven't seen the picture, it's on Facebook. Um, it's, I got close and he looked right at me. Um, because I, I I climbed up on things to get that picture. (laughs) So you're welcome. Yeah, sure. we found him 20 minutes later and he was walking through the park and I will say I I understand he's on vacation with his kids I totally get it his security guards kept everyone away if you'd even tried anyone that tried to get a little bit close 
his security guard would just turn away, just turn around, put his hand up and start shaking his head. Um, so I totally get it. He's on vacation. I got, but this just- isn't just like a famous actor where they get that no. a lot too. This is, this is like the legend, the living legend, Michael Jordan. He, this yes. poor man probably can't go anywhere. And I have to say for celebrities that want to go, cause of course celebrities are listening to us for celebrities that want to go to the parks right now, you can, because those masks and right. sunglasses and a baseball cap that he was wearing, you can't tell. Except you- for the fact that he's like seven foot nine. And- Correct. And I know everything about him. So I knew that was him. Everybody but, does. But he, I will say, as I saw him walking like by the teacups, people didn't know who he was. People were kind of giving him second glances because he had two VIPs. He had burly guys that looked like security guards around him. Yeah. But you couldn't, it's not like people are maybe like, oh, there goes Michael Jordan. They didn't know. Plus they were looking for the bucks. So good play on Michael Jordan's part. Yeah. Lucky <laughs> coincidence there. or Maybe not. So yeah. how far did so we get here? Have, are we still in the news? Did we move on to the, I think we're moving on from the news. Anyways, I saw Michael Jordan. I was a happy person. And now back to Valentine's Day. That was big news that we forgot we were going to talk about. I kind of love yeah. that story. All right. So yes. from the news into the daily roundup. Yes. All right. So should we talk, I mean, for Valentine's Day, what do you guys celebrate it? Is it big in your house? so I think there are like people who like really like go crazy and love Valentine's Day and then there are people who like really hate Valentine's Day because they might be the people who love it and set high expectations and then can be disappointed I I like Valentine's Day I think that it's lovely even if it's a Hallmark holiday I think it's a lovely excuse to tell the people that you love how much you love them it doesn't have for me it doesn't have to be a big deal you know I love to get flowers so um that's all you got to do not I mean you don't even have to if even if you picked a flower from the garden that would be fine for me but just don't buy me grocery store flowers because those are ginormous (laughs) waste of money like Costco Trader Joe's fine but you're please don't go to you know Paris Teeter or Publix or whatever you're you know local grocery store chain is because those are never any good no offense they're just not grocery store but a field field flowers are good to go yeah well because they're free (laughs) like I just hate the idea of wasting money on crappy flowers and it also lacks forethought so that is true that is true because it's not yeah but again like you know like do you go out to dinner on valentine's day we usually don't go out for dinner i think we went out for dinner before we got married um we don't usually go out for dinner i make it more i guess more kids like we do baskets for the kids the only thing i ask for are my chocolates um and not i just not the cheap uh yeah see i'm kind of with you not the cheap like grocery store box like i have a chocolate store that i just get me six that's all i want um they're the little like fancy chocolates so that's yeah it's not really big it's kind of an excuse to make a nice dinner Mm -hmm. um you know I feel like you know outside of Disney going out to dinner on Valentine's Day is kind of hard because you have to get your reservation super far in advance and although at Disney that's kind of standard but but um it's always like a fixed price. They're always so busy. They're churning people over really fast. The food's never as good. You don't have as much selection. So for me, I, eh, I'd i rather like get something really good at the grocery store and, and make it. And then, yeah, you know. I was going to say, I think that's what our plan is. This is the first time we'll be down here for Valentine's Day. Um, I think we're going to stay in that night. Obviously, you know, it's a little COVID, a little of everything else, yeah. but um, but no, I mean, plus, you know, they do, they have released, they're doing prefix menus. I am not a huge fan of prefix menus. Um, you know, I feel like I, if I'm going to go to a restaurant, I want to experience like the full restaurant and the food. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of staying in, um, we do have some great ideas for if you are in Disney, um, and these can work for Valentine's day or a date night, or if you're there for an anniversary or, Okay. you know I you, love they, the idea I love the idea of romance at Disney I'll, I'll be honest like Disney is never like like a, you know I obviously am obsessed and love with it love Disney but it's not what pops into my head when I think romance 
sorry. It just isn't. <laughs> However, have, I'll be the opposite side. <laughs> you have romantic experiences at Disney. I do. Um, for me, like, but but I love some of these ideas, not necessarily for Valentine's Day, although if you are there this week, I think you should go for it. But I love yes. this first one a lot. Yes. So uh, one of the things that we would like to recommend for celebrating Valentine's Day or any romantic occasion at Disney World is um, Wine Bar George puts together a picnic. Uh, picnics are one of those things that I feel like are so much work to if you do yes. it on your own and also can be end up being like, well, like you sit on the blanket and you're like, okay, now what? I've done all this work. Yeah. We're sitting here. So how nice to have it put together for you. Yes. Buy a place like Wine Bar George that has great options to eat, right? And drink. I was going to say, yeah. And you can customize it too. So like they have the basket, but you can switch some cheeses out. And it's basically, you know, a, it's like meat, cheeses, crackers, you know, like full on. Like a charcuterie. Pic- yeah, like a charcuterie um, picnic basket. And then of course you can get wine. Love it. Love it. And um, this is, you just walk up to the quick service window for this. You walk up to the quick service window, which is called the basket. Um, you can order, I've ordered wine from there um, and just sat there. Actually, we ordered a cheese and we did a small one. It was not a basket. We just did a quick like cheese and crackers um, and we drank wine with it. And I love right across the street from there, there's this live entertainment kind of area um, where they play music, but they have a whole bunch of really nice benches and seats and it's overlooking the water right by the boathouse. It's right where the cars go into the water too. Oh, um, yeah. So it's a really, yeah, it's a really it's a cute spot. area. It's a perfect spot to bring the basket um, or bring the basket home or bring it wherever you'd like. But if you want to stay at Disney Springs, I like that spot the best. I like this. It's like low key romance. Yes. You, know, you don't have to plan ahead. There's not a lot of pressure. I like this a lot. Although I like it too, especially with kids, because if you're like, I don't want to sit down with these kids, get a basket, let them run around in circles. Right. And now maybe you should do this because now you don't have to worry about I getting might. a sitter during COVID times, like having someone in your house that you don't yeah. know. Or I like this. I was going to say, we might, we might do this. I like this, except my kids love cheese, man. They take it all. They <laughs> Mine, too. all it. <laughs> Mine too. Mine too. All right. So I like this. I think this is my number one. Um, yeah. Now you mentioned that you need your chocolate. So do you need my chocolate? Where, so here you are, you are at Disney right now. What do you, where are yes. you going to get this chocolate? Okay. So I am heading here. So today is Tuesday. I am going here before Valentine's day. Um, but two places to get chocolate at Disney Springs. Um, one is the Ganachery. Um, Ganachery has become my favorite. Um, I never went in it because it is such a tiny shop. So it has, um, anytime I pass it, it has a monster line. And now with COVID, because it's so tiny, you're only allowed two parties in there and your parties can't be bigger than four people. So it is the line backs up, but we've gone in the mornings, we've gone kind of off times and the line has not been horrendous. So we do plan on going, I think we might go Friday morning and hope that it's better there. But they have some amazing things in there um, that I will take some pictures of. They have a Sweetheart Mini Pinata, which I am so excited. It is a round mini, think like the size of the caramel apples, Mm -hmm. but it's chocolate and hollow. And inside is marshmallows and other types of candy. And they give you like the hammer to kind of bash it in. It's so cute. I'm going to get it. I will send pictures, but yeah, they are selling that. And that's a usual pretty staple over there for, um, um, for Valentine's day. They also have a love note heart pinata, which is basically the same thing, just not mini. Um, so and this, this is, 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 are you bashing mini in? Like, is you're it... bashing the whole chocolate thing? That's so I like guess mini? It's yeah. So it's like, it's basically the shape of what the caramel apples that have like the mini ears on it. And then you have the caramel apples. Oh, okay. I thought you were like bashing like, like a a chocolate bunny, but mini. Okay. No. So it's the same shape. So it's the shape of a Mickey head, but it's mini and you literally bash it because it's filled with stuff inside. Okay. So very, 
Yes, very excited for that. They also, their squares, if you have not got them, are amazing. Um, for Valentine's, they are coming, they have a strawberry champagne one. Oh um, and it has, it sounds so good. That one sounds, I will tell you, I've tried quite a few now. Again, chocolate, but it, they have an orange one that's delicious. Oh, they I have love. a Minnie and Mickey one that are delicious. The orange one, Juliana. Chocolate is, and orange is such a fantastic combination. Oh, like, love so it. So good. Um, but this one has a very cute um, Cinderella's, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, Cinderella's coach on the front. Um, oh, so okay. that one's supposed to be really cute. And then they have their lollipops that they usually sell. They're just Valentine's Day. So, um, so no, this is a cool one. I think this is a cool one too, that if you're here or in the area or looking for, it's a cool to gift to give to the kids too. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you do little gifts for the kids. Right. Um, right. so yeah, that I one I suspect. One, yeah. I like very that because so do your boys like, cause so, so with, with my kids, we like, I, I always kind of nudge my husband to do something nice for the kids on Valentine's day. Cause I feel like it's a little more about his relationship with them at this yes. point than, and that's than his with me. So do you have boys? So do I they boys. like, chocolate? no, I've tried saying the hints that they, you know, I'm your Valentine, but nothing there, but I get my kids usually like small Valentine's day baskets. Some I'll put some candy in there. But usually it's like a small toy of some type, mm -hmm. um, you know, or, you know, for the little one, I might get them like little Play-Dohs, like something just cute little, but I will get them some chocolates that they can have later. Uh, so, you know, this is a cute, this is a cute one. Save the ganachery chocolates for yourself. I, the chocolates, they don't touch. The squares are <laughs> hidden. I hear you. I hear you. They are not cheap little chocolates right. no they a good nursery is never gonna have cheap chocolates so. no but they're not m&ms yeah yeah m and store just opened up that's another one that they can go to take them there m and um, store for the kids ganache yes. for mom just don't touch my ganache squares um right. even eric won't i've had them in the house and I, they're like hidden under things and he won't he won't you. grab me there i'm like I just don't you. do it just so, don't do it also for a sweet tooth in Disney Springs is Amaret's Patisserie, right? So yes. They have yummy stuff that people really, really love. But for Valentine's Day, they have a dipped strawberry bouquet. Yes. I, I saw a this. picture of this. It looks super cute. I need this in my life. Who yes. doesn't love chocolate strawberries? <sighs> so good. Hard to I eat. But good. Hard to eat. I that is one of the things we get. I get the melted chocolate and strawberries, and the mm. kids usually help me dip the Aww. strawberries and chocolate. Oh, little we usually do that. Cute. So this one's cute. This one's cute. And then they also have the Love is in the Air petite cake. And I've seen a picture of it. The Love in the Air is from Up. It's basically a mini up cake. It's it's oh. adorable. Yeah. So talk about like that's gotta be the most romantic Disney movie. It really is. Ever. Ever. It really is. That whole opening I love scene. That so no, I thought it was adorable that they did um, like a mini petite cake of that movie because it is, it's, it's, it's a sad movie, but it's, it's a very romantic movie. Oh, but it's such a um, story. Such yes. Story. So yes, those, those are two great places to go. Even if you're not all about celebrating, it might just be fun to go get those chocolates. Um, yeah. They are limited time, so they are only sold right around Valentine's Day. Um, but it is, it's a cute idea. I like it. So yes. if you are someone who likes to go all out and wants to do the out to dinner romantic thing for uh, uh, Valentine's Day, I do think there are some places that will scratch that itch at Disney for sure. Yes. Um, Right. Like, even though I said, I don't, I don't think of Disney and romance as synonymous. It does like, it does exist. I just haven't oh, yeah. looked for it, it. I was gonna say it does exist. There's, you know, engagements, there's weddings, there's honeymoons, Absolutely. there's, you know, anniversaries. So I think this list is a good place for a romantic night out for celebrating something. Um, but they're definitely more on some of these I, kids are perfectly fine. And obviously, um, but they are definitely ones that you can just go in as a couple and not be surrounded by a ton of 
screaming children. Right. Or like, uh, for the most part, families that do go know that this is not Chef Mickey's. We're not getting up and dancing in the aisles. So I think my number one choice, if I were to want a romantic dinner at Disney, would be Victoria and Albert's in um, Grand Floridian. Yes. I say this this is like top list i i would love to, i have not done it i would love to do it this is like drop some coin like serious seriously expensive um i have heard the best food in all of disney world uh i i don't know because i haven't tried it yet um this is the only restaurant correct me if i'm wrong at disney where children are not allowed so no, you really do want to get away from from your kids and other people's kids this is your choice Yes. And if I'm remembering correctly, they also have a chef's table that you can do where I think the yes. chef like just brings you. You're, I think you're actually in part of the kitchen. Yeah. Like I think, it's, I think it's kind of one of those behind the scenes, again, very pricey. Um, sure. And can you do it with just pricey. two people or is it like- I believe, yes, six? you can- no, you can do it with just two people back there. Um, it's a set price back there, um, but you can do it obviously before COVID. Right. Um, but it was it was very very popular. It was almost impossible to get, um, but it was kind of the absolute top romantic, expensive dinner that you could do. I just googled was, it, guys. Did you see my face? Like it. Um, uh, woo, okay. <laughs> so guests 10 and under can't go you have to be 10 and yep. older um i so just a quick google search the current it's pre-fee uh the current cost is 250 per guest and wine pairings begin at 150 per guest wow oh but then it says as of august 30th 2020 it's going to increase to 350 so this is obviously an older <laughs> article i'm reading but I don't know that I will ever spend $700 on a dinner for two. I, I don't know if it'll ever happen. I'd love for it to happen. Bob's, we could write articles, lots of articles on it. Um, wow, that is, yeah, more, it when, is. I, when I heard expensive, I didn't realize, holy no, smokes. It is crazy town expensive. It does uh, have three Michelin stars. Yes. So that's for the chef's table, but I wonder what the price is for, I think it's this, that starts 180, I think. Yeah. For a 10 course menu. And again, for when the dining plan was here, not not included. It would be like eight credits. That's, wow, I'm blown away. I knew it was expensive and I am happy to drop money on good food (laughs) if I have it. (laughs) Like, you know, I love food. I'm a foodie. I love restaurants. I love uh, watching a chef cook. Yeah. But that is a hefty it's, one. It's a hefty one. Um, so yeah, my favorite restaurant that is not as expensive. Ooh, yeah, uh, have that I've that actually off the list. Ooh. <laughs> that oh I've God, done a few, <laughs> a few date nights at is California Grill. Um, it's one of the ones I recommend. It's a nice dinner. It is more on the expensive side but it's not crazy town like that um, by any regards. It is, California Grill is at the top of the Contemporary Resort. It actually overlooks the Magic Kingdom um, and and then it overlooks the Seven Seas Lagoons. It's gorgeous. It has patios out there. When the fireworks were running, they piped in the music and you could see the fireworks from outside on the balcony. Um, It's a fantastic restaurant. The three of us went. Um, when we were there, I love it. Um, they have great wine, great food. Um, so my husband and I have been there, I think twice now, um, when we've gotten babysitters in the past and I love that restaurant. So it's, we're going to see, I I almost want to, the kids can come. I have seen kids there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would pick a maybe earlier reservation time, obviously with the kids, um, I was considering all of us going and I think we might do like a, f- try and get like an early 530 reservation, but kids definitely come, um, views fantastic, but yeah, and, it's one of my favorites. And there's getting an earlier reservation is fine because 
you, like you said, you can see the fireworks when they're going and before, and I assume hopefully someday again, if you had an early reservation, you can show your receipt or your app or yes. something, and you can get back up there to watch the fireworks. When yeah, they, you when could show your show. receipt and they'd let you back up because it is a separate elevator. You have to check in and then there's a separate elevator that takes you up. But as long as you show your receipt, you're allowed back in. It also works if you had like, you know, I guess if you were there without kids, you had an earlier reservation, you want to go back for drinks, you can show your receipt, go back up to the bar. Um, so it is, it's a great restaurant. Um, I do, I love that restaurant. So that That's is beautiful. one of my favorites. Yeah, it's, it's view, it's, it's not characters, but it still has some Disney magic with the views of seeing everything. <laughs> So uh, you want you want the characters for a romantic evening? No, <laughs> I meant like Disney eyes. Like right. people have asked me, where's a great restaurant we can go? Not characters, but still Disney. And right. I feel this like is, this restaurant does Disney, but in one. a yeah, in like an elegant fashion. Right, right. So also, if you want to see the fireworks, uh, you can't see them. I don't think from any of the tables, but. Narcusi's at Grand Floridian is also really lovely and elegant. Yes. This one you can have kids there. So when the fireworks go there, you just step outside. There's like a yep. viewing like on the water, right? Am I yeah. right? Yeah. So it is located kind of on the water of the Grand Floridian. So it's not in the main building. It's out there. So obviously you can see it's angled. So you can see the Magic Kingdom right from there. Um, so you would just step outside and see it. Um, so no, that's a great, it's, it's on my list again. Um, I have not physically been there. I've walked by, I've walked through it and by there. Um, but no, it's a, it's a fantastic restaurant as well. Uh, right at the Grand Floridian. Grand Floridian has those, has those two really good restaurants. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, I'm going to guess that the price point at Narcusi's is probably, half or less than, than Victoria and Albert's yeah uh, and it's not a fixed price so you can control a little bit of yeah I would say have. California Grill and Narcuzzi's are about the same price wise around depending on what you're ordering so expensive still uh no Michelin stars no Michelin like, stars uh, like Victoria and Albert's but who e I still can't get over it I am like sticker shocked right now <laughs> wow all right so what other restaurants do we got? Well, um, I think people really like Paddlefish and Disney Springs. Yes. Um, and that's fun. It's like a, you know, a seafoody vibe. That's the one with the, on the boat. Yeah. Big so boat. It's, yeah. it's a cool atmosphere, cool vibe. If you like seafood, which apparently is romantic for a lot of people. Um, right. Like yeah. aren't oysters supposed to be yep. aphrodisiacs and stuff. Yep. And I know they serve those there, don't they? Yes, they serve those there. Um, paddlefish, yeah. it's kind of like a, a up, upper scale seafood. Yeah. Um, so it's it's a, it's a definite cute one in Disney Springs. Um, I would say it's a, it's, Boathouse is your other seafood option there. Um, they're they're just different vibes. Boathouse, I wouldn't really call a romantic right. vibe. But I personally <laughs> prefer Boathouse, but it's not a yeah. romantic dinner. Yeah, I would prefer Boathouse's food, but not romantic over there. No. Um, so Paddlefish gets, I think, a, a nod. We That one we would recommend. Yeah. Now you've been, and I really want to try Toledo's over yes. at Coronado Springs, right? I love Toledo's. Um, the reason I put it in the romantic vibe is they have a really cool bar up there right next to it. And it has this giant balcony. And where Coronado situated is it's right behind Galaxy's Edge of Hollywood Studios. So you see Galaxy's Edge, you start seeing all of Hollywood Studios. Um, you can kind of see Epcot off in the distance, um, but the bar is very swanky. The outdoor seating is very swanky. Um, yeah, the restaurant itself, I wouldn't say swanky. It's more, it's almost more like Spanish kind of deal inside, interior inside. It's romantic. Like yeah, later. but it's, I would definitely call it romantic. There's definite kids in there, um, but it could definitely be romantic. Um, again, that bar just kind of puts it over the edge. Um, their food is fantastic. Um, it's small plates. It's great. 
Um, so yeah, Small it's plates are romantic too. You share, totally. your, you know, like I think I, I mean, to me, food is so sexy. So, so yeah, so this definitely, I love this one. Um, it's not currently opened or I would have been there by now. Um, so I'm hoping Coronado opens it up at some point in time because they had a great dinner. So yeah. I, I'm hoping it, it gets there soon. Cause yeah, it was a huge one for us. We went for Thanksgiving actually and loved, we just foregoed the turkey um and loved yeah. our dinner yeah so it was great so there's one more um that i would not have thought of and and when i read about it was really impressed um in the in the resorts and not in the parks it's uh Gico in animal kingdom so Gico yes. the cooking place i would not have thought of this because it's actually not their upscale restaurant at animal kingdom right sana or am i backwards no, you're backwards. Jico uh, is the, yeah, the Jico is one. the fancier one over sauna. So I've heard the food at both of these places is fantastic. It's a little more uh, adventurous and ethnic, which I'm totally cool with. But the thing about Jico that sounds really neat is that the lighting and the ambiance in there is very romantic, where they actually change the lighting inside the restaurant to mimic yes. an African sunset. How cool is yeah. that? I think that's awesome. Um, I've read about it. I haven't, I haven't been in Jico. Mm -mm. Um, we're big fans of sauna. We've done to go sauna, um, since we've been down here and gotten that bread service bread. and the food. Um, amazing. But yeah, I, Jico looks absolutely amazing. It's actually one of the, it's the only restaurant in Animal Kingdom Lodge I've not tried. Um, but it looks amazing. And I've read about this indoor sunset and that would be so adorable yeah. and cute for a romantic night out. Plus one of my favorite things to do is walk around animal kingdom lodge and you can walk out and see the animals there. I just think it's, and it's that's really so romantic, restaurant. right? Like on an African safari, like with that, I mean, yes, I love this. I'm so, for, so if for our listeners who haven't heard me say like, uh, have not yet stayed yet stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge and I have been very uh, uh, strongly preparing my husband that we will take a family trip to Disney pretty much as soon as we move back to the States yes. and we will be staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge and we will be God, I hope club levels open at the time. Like this is going to be a welcome home party at Animal Kingdom Lodge. I really want to go. And I think we'll have to find a way to do a romantic. I was going to say, Chico. it's a, you know, it's, I, I feel like the entire decor over there too is very, it is, it's African safari. It's romantic, it's sunsets and, you know, romantic, it's, it's romantic. So I think this one's an awesome one. Love it. Um, Love it. And now I'm going to have to check to see if Jico's open. See, this is the problem with being down here. Now I'm like, oh, what about that? What well, about I that? I, I'm sorry, I don't, what's the problem? My problem is my bank account right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. But it's not, look, it's not Victoria and Albert's. That's close, it's, lucky you. That is true. Lucky I mean, you. if we're comparing the two, I mean, I'm getting a deal over there. Right? You so. could have like five dinners. Right? So, so, yes. <laughs> so let's talk about the parks, right? So I think yes. that most people probably think that Magic Kingdom is the most romantic park. Like if you're the type of lady who fancies yourself a princess and that Prince Charming thing is romantic to you, then the iconic castle, all that, you know, that's where the proposals happen. That's where, that's where you see a lot of romance going on. Yeah. So I think we have a face-off here between two romantic restaurants in the Magic Kingdom which would be Cinderella's Royal Table in Cinderella Castle yeah. and um, Be Our Guest in Beast Castle. So I am okay. team Cinderella's Castle. Okay. Um, we went to Be Our Guest for lunch, which is the fancy dinner menu. Right. Um, the food's good. It's, it's good. Um, I've told the story. My kids, not so great come price range. Um, but I just, I don't know. I think it's because I've been in Be Our Guest for bre for quick service breakfast mm -hmm. and quick service lunches mm -hmm. that it just doesn't calculate to me mm -hmm. as a romantic spot. It's a very I mean, different vibe. Have you ever been there? Right? I, have, I have, I mean, we did the lunch. So it's basically the same thing with the same food and the beast comes out and everything else like that. I've never done the dinner portion, like actually there during dinner time. 
It's definitely um, a different vibe at dinner. I don't, I've never done the lunch now that lunch is sit down, but I have done yeah. breakfast when it was a quick service and then dinner with actually a group of, of eight. Uh, it was two families that were traveling together. And it's definitely more romantic than it is during the day, just by virtue of the atmosphere, the lights are dim. Yeah. Um, I love, love, love this restaurant's, uh, uh, I just love that it's Beast Castle. I love the way they they did the you have the library room and the and the you know the all the the ballroom and all the different yes. rooms. You can't choose in which one you get to sit at the no. at, for a table service, and you can barely choose actually for a quick service because what's there I was going to say you can barely choose in general, but you can walk around even during COVID. We were able to walk around and see all the different rooms, and, and they, they every room has a different feel and it's lovely and they have the room with the I guess it's the library where they had the west wing where they have the the rose petals with the yes. petals falling off and then they do the thunder every once it's just really, I was really say, neat. My, that's the scary room to my kids that's yeah scary. a lot of kids do find it scary <laughs> but it's scary I think it's really cool I love this castle however I, see, I love it I agree with you that in terms of romance Cinderella, Cinderella's Royal Table takes the cake. You walk up that staircase and, yeah. and then, you know, the room is a little more intimate. It doesn't feel yeah. as like, like be our guest feels expansive. I think mostly because I end up eating in the ballroom. Every I would time. say it's huge. Like the ballroom area is big. So, and so of course, like the clanking sounds travel, that's not very romantic. Whereas is Cinderella's royal table is carpeted and there are drapes and so that the sound isn't as loud and and the tables feel smaller and more intimate I don't know I so I'm with you I think so I was gonna say I've done Cinderella's royal table before we were married just as two of us and you know we requested a window table and it was then obviously there was characters coming even with the characters it was still romantic type feel um, even with the kids around, it was just, I, I don't know. It was, we did the dinner and I would say the dinner was just a lot more romantic. It's the whole story of Cinderella. So you have that kind of playing in the back of your mind and, um, you're inside the castle. So even as a grown adult and yes, we're weird and love Disney, but you're inside the castle. It was cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's, you know, you see this giant castle, and I've always said, you see this giant castle and you can't get in it. You're like, oh my God, look at Cinderella's castle when you walk in Magic Kingdom. And you're like, no, you can't go in. Um, so this restaurant is like, you get to go in right. and see. And like you said, that spiral staircase that goes, yeah, that spiral staircase that goes up, it, it's awesome. I have a video of it, of my kids, like they had no idea. Cool. And you just keep going up and up. It's a really cool thing. Um, so yeah, I say California or California. I say Cinderella's castle wins. Yeah. I think the food is comparable. I might even give the edge on the food to, to, um, uh, be our guest, but, but I haven't been to Cinderella's for dinner and such. Like, I don't, it was 14 years ago. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know, but yeah, I was be our guest food was really good. But so. for romance, Cinderella, for sure. Romance Cinderella. For sure. Um, yes. So let's go over to Boardwalk for a minute. And we okay. I, and, and now that I'm thinking about it, this is a really good alternative <laughs> to Victoria and Albert's. Not yeah. because the food is the same, <laughs> but so there's Flying Fish at Boardwalk, which again, um, as the name denotes, is probably mostly seafood, right? Yeah. I can't, but they also have a chef's counter, mm -hmm. which might be less romantic than having your own little table. Yes, that's true. But if you're one of those people who, like, I love to watch the chefs work. I love to yeah. have them just give me their creations. Like that to me is romantic and fun. And and, and also sometimes takes the pressure off of having to talk to your right? spouse. Because <laughs> how much do you have to say? It takes the pressure off of having to make the romance because you're talking about the food, you're learning about the food, about the food and, and you're watching the food. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, a, a shared experience versus like, you know, staring at each other in the face. Not that I don't love my husband to death, but anyway, so, um, so yeah, so I think this is a really great option. The and yeah. one again that I might not have thought of, but is probably going to happen 
more likely than Victoria and Albert's now that I know. I, say, I, think, I think that's a great one. And plus you have the boardwalk and I mean, we're talking when things open back up, um, but the boardwalk I think was just a cool area to stroll around. You can, you know, stroll down the boardwalk. You can even go around and do stroll by the beach club and the yacht club. Um, I think that whole area is really area. cool. And you yeah. can get a drink ahead of time at Abracadabra if you want, you know, which is, which is cool. So and yeah, I like this idea. Jelly rolls afterwards. This is a fun I, date night. It's a fun date night. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. So Victoria and Alberts can stuff it. <laughs> <laughs> but this one's but if anybody wants to send us there we're more than happy to go and taste right, it for you right so one last comparison then that i want to make uh one is in a park and one is in the resorts and that is um le Cellier in the canada pavilion canada. at uh epcot which yep. there's a million great restaurants in epcot so we, we couldn't talk about all of them this is like the, it's a, their fancy steakhouse and it's the environment, the atmosphere is really, really romantic. It's, it's, um, it's kind of lodgy, but sort of upscale. I like it. I think it's cool. However, people, and it's the steakhouse, right? But overwhelmingly, Disney fans will tell you the, if, if steak is your romantic meal, and I know it is for my husband, um, you're better off at Yachtsman in the Yacht Club. Yeah, so I haven't eaten at either. To be told, steak is not, I like steak. I'm not a huge fan of eating steak out at restaurants. Um, really? I, I, I only eat it like once a month, maybe twice a month, like once every two months. And I only like filet and I only like it, you know, like I want to pick out the exact filet that I want because I don't eat it very much and I don't really like other types of steak. So I'm not a big going out for steak type of person, mm -hmm. but I have walked through both of these restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I need to go to Lacey Lair because I, Canada, but right. um, I haven't been, I will tell you, I have tried their um, soup, their beer, their cheese soup, uh, do you, um, that, is romantic on all levels because I would <laughs> marry that soup. <laughs> so fun. I love that soup because um, they sell that soup during um, festivals occasionally. So food and wine had that that same soup out and you're God. Right. Um, but I've walked through both of them. I think they have, if we're just going on like restaurant alone, I would say Lacey Lear because I think the inside is more intimate where the yachtsman is in the beach club. It kind of, it overlooks, it's like to the, it's to the right of storm along Bay, right. but it still has the hotel -y feel when you're looking yeah. outside. The I agree. You know? I agree. It's like a Canadian rustic sort of cozy lodge yes. kind of thing versus they're going for this new England yacht club kind of vibe. And it's, it's a little dark, but it has all these windows, but, it, but yeah, you're looking at people, you know, walk into the pool in their bathing suits. Well, I mean, yeah. Like night swimming that day. Like yeah. it just, my, I love the restaurants in Epcot that take you away from the theme park and you right. feel like you're in something else. Right. right. And I feel like they really do a good job of this one, especially right. because you don't feel like you're in a theme park. It kind of breaks away. Right. It's right. Whereas, whereas, you know, when you're at, at Yachtsman that you are, at, at the yacht club the yacht club yeah but again but, i have heard the same thing the steak at yachtsman wins hands down that's what i've heard yeah but so. if you if you are at la Cellier, you can make a complete romantic package date night by doing our next suggestion for a romantic yes. evening at disney world which is to you know y'all know we love epcot you yeah. know, we love Epcot with or without kids. We love Epcot. So just spending the evening strolling around the world showcase, pretending you're traveling the actual world, right? Tasting all the good food, drinking all the good drinks. It's along the, you know, the, the lake is, it, it's so nice. It's so it nice. Evening. I was going to say, we could put together an entire menu for you. You could stop off in Mexico and get a margarita and some chips and guac to begin your night. And then you carry on. I could put together an entire menu for you. Seriously. And I really, 
Yeah. And you need to end in France and you need to get bubbly and, you know, you could do bread and cheese depending on where you are in the <laughs> probably, night. Or probably best to skip Le Cellier altogether if you want to do this, because there are so many options to, to eat and yeah. drink in the World Showcase. Like, I love this idea. And I love like, like the picnic basket we were talking about, that it's low key, low pressure, yes. low uh, planning involved, like just, you know, find someone to hang with the kids if you want. And, and I, do I had to say too, with going to Epcot, I, I've never been to the parks as much as I've been doing lately. And I've spent a lot of time just going around Epcot and looking at all the detail of all the countries and kind of walking every part. Cause usually, I mean, you're there, you're kind of like, all right, we got to go here. We got to go here. We got to go here. And really stopping and slowing down and seeing all the different countries and everything they have to offer. And there's, I mean, it's all around the water. You have water views. It's gorgeous. I, I love this idea. Yeah, it's it's probably my favorite. It's probably my favorite. So, um, so yeah, so I guess that's all of our advice as far as, as doing romantic things at Disney. Yes. I have no experience with this whatsoever. <laughs> We've never done anything romantic at Disney that I can think of other than actually taking the trip, which is the most grand gesture. Um, yes. You have a romantic Disney story. I do. Um, I've said it a few times before, I think at the beginning when we've kind of introduced ourselves, but obviously I've said we've done date nights at California Grill. We've done a date night at Epcot, walking around the world. We've gotten sitters, but the most romantic one was when we got engaged. Um, so we got engaged in front of Cinderella's castle. Um, I had told That's Eric awesome. at the time that that was, that had been my dream to get engaged at Disney. Um, and you know, he definitely delivered. Um, so I kind of knew this was fun. what you wanted. I told he asked me if you were to get engaged somewhere, would there be a special place? Like we had talked about it, and I said, "Yeah, well, dream has always been to get engaged at Disney because I knew he wasn't going to have a Disney wedding. I knew my parents would kill me if I said I wanted a Disney wedding. So he knew <laughs> we did." Some parts were not romantic. Some parts were, we were around Epcot at 95 degrees walking around and we were sweaty, hot messes. And we went to Citricos and they wouldn't let us into their restaurant because we weren't dressed appropriately. Because <laughs> you're hooligans. hooligans. And we looked so horrible, but they let us sit at the bar. That's nice. Um, but I want to ask you about this. I want to ask you about the engagement and, and then yes. people are probably going to get sick of us. But um were you expecting it? Did you know it was coming? I was expecting it. So basically we went, he wanted to go back to Cinderella. He'd go back to Magic Kingdom to see the fireworks. Um, and we were right in front of the Plaza restaurant. And at the time they had those yellow umbrellas. They still have them and the tables, mm -hmm. but the section was bigger and it like overlooked the Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. At the time they had them roped off because you had to have, I don't know if it was reservations or step, whatever you had to have to have them. And he, we were standing there waiting for the fireworks and he went up to a security guard and said something. And all of a sudden the security guard let us through. So that's what tipped you off. That, well, the entire night, the entire day kind of tripped, tipped me off. But for the most, that was like, oh, okay. So I was getting super nervous. So I actually went to the bathroom before him. We got our table and I went to the bathroom because I was freaking out. Oh. Um, but of course it was not in the age of all the cell phones and everything else like that. So there was no pictures or no videos of it happening, but he waited until the fireworks started and it was um, wishes. So it was the old one. And it was right about when they were talking about your wishes come true. Oh, and I love so it. It was super cute. Um, he then, as soon as we get, did get engaged, we stopped off into the crystal store on uh, main street yeah. yeah and he got me a cinderella's uh glass slipper and oh. then they etched in the date that we got engaged um so we got that when we were staying off property i know how amazing but um we told the front desk front desk sends up champagne um so no very romantic oh. it was i think it depends on the person like that was my I wanted that to happen and he, and he definitely delivered. made it happen. I love it. And so, it was cute. It's, it's so funny because I say, I say I'm not a super romantic person, but I love that story. Like I, I love it. And it was that same show played when we brought our first son there and it was the same fireworks show. And it was, Aww. it was very, 
and they took that one away it hurt a little bit um but oh. two of my kids got to see it um so it was it's a really cool story to say you got engaged at disney world and i don't know it it was definitely he let me have that one because the wedding at disney wasn't wasn't happening well so. that might have been a bit much it was it, i get it i get it <laughs> But if anyone out there does want to get married at Disney, you just give us a call because we will hook yeah, you up. Yeah, you give us a call because I would love to plan that. I had lots of ideas for a Disney wedding. I, I got you. I would love to plan. If I wasn't a vacation planner, I'd be a wedding planner. So if I could combine the two, that would be awesome. Oh, that'd be amazing. All right. All right. So that is, I think, pretty much it for yes. telling you about romance at Disney. And I think we're going to call it there because we apparently could talk a lot about this. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Apparently. Who knew? But so let's go with the mouse, straight into the mouse tip, Lori. What do you got? So we want to do the mouse tip. It's it's basic stuff, but we wanted to kind of bring it back just to remind everyone of it. So we were talking about Valentine's dinner reservations. Um, so we wanted to remind everyone that dining reservations are released now at 60 days. Um, they get released um, from the day of your arrival. So if you're staying on property, it's 60 days from the day of your arrival. And when you log in and they get released at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, when you do log in, you are able to make dining reservations for your entire stay. Um, if you are not staying at Walt Disney World Resort, um, you have to make them day by day from the 60 days. But just a reminder, that is when they are made. It's your best chances to get those dining reservations that you want. Um, so we recommend making those dining reservations um, ahead of time, if you're not 100% sure on things, you can still make them and then you can cancel them up to 24 hours in advance. Right. Most restaurants. Some are, yes. some require 48 hours. Yes. But, um, but yeah, so that's that. So thank you for yes. wasting another evening with us. We appreciate it. And uh, if you have a Disney love story that you'd like to share, clearly we love to talk about it and hear about it. So please share them with us uh, on our Facebook page and our group. Um, let us know in the comments. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. And for the latest news on Disney, don't forget to visit our blog at mousegamoms with an S blog.com and join our Facebook group at, what is it? Disney planning and chat by Mouse Moms. Yes. <laughs> we just recently adjusted the name a little bit, so I got to get used to saying that. But anyway, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye.